Into the night, when summer comes where shines, came the movie known as Zorro. It was bold and risque, to Jones, pocket A, complete straight A's for Zorro. Impresses Zorro. He was drunk and he prayed, made us crave the gateway. Was all set day for poor Zorro. Zorro, Zorro, with slapstick that just sucks shit. Zorro, Zorro, a kid, goddamn it, a kid. Zorro, Zorro, stuck like a fucking cartoon. Zorro, Zorro, a lame and sunny baboon. Sorry, 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 sorry. Nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Director Martin Campbell has been getting a bit of a reputation as a savior of franchises. Not only did he revive the James Bond movies from Total Destruction twice, but he also brought the classic Zorro back from the grave in The Mask of Zorro. In a time when everything was CG explosions and disaster films, this gave us actual stunts, developed characters, comedy, drama, old comers, newcomers. It was a reminder of how summer movies were supposed to be done. And of course, it was a big hit. So big that everyone involved went on to do other things. The spotlight was suddenly on these people and they didn't want this to be the only thing they were associated with. But then after a few shitty movies, they said, yes, yes, we do want to be associated with this. Remember when we were good here? Remember when you loved us here? Well, we're gonna help you relive those moments all over again with a sequel. A mere seven years later. Way to ride that hot streak, guys. But hey, even if something came out six years too late, it doesn't mean it necessarily makes it a bad product. <laughs> no, the fact that it's a bad product is what makes it a bad product. Where the first film had a bit of an edge to it with family members being killed off and disembodied heads in jars, this one plays like a fucking Saturday morning cartoon. No drama, no logic, and stunts you'd see at a Six Flags stunt show than a high budget sequel. It was a pretty major letdown. But it's one thing to talk about it, it's something else entirely to experience it. So, let's take a look at Hollywood's shitty ass... ZEQUEL! So California is on the verge of becoming the 31st state as an election is held to hopefully merge with the Union. Insert immediate stupid as Zorro himself apparently votes in the election. That must have been an interesting registration form to fill out. Okay, sir, if you could please fill out your... Ha -ha! No, sir, that's a... Ha -ha! I'm going to need your full name, <laughs> sir, this won't count if you're <laughs> or king, whatever. <laughs> but a villain with two frozen strips of bacon on his face comes to steal the ballots by... shooting their hats off. Take your business, my givens. I haven't voted yet. Oh. I'm sorry, you're too late. The polls have already closed. Don't mess with me, boy. I've caused the Top Hat Massacre of 43. Of course, Zorro, played by Antonio Banderas, comes in to save the day. Sir, what do we do? He has no hat to shoot. Then God help us all. They literally tried to steal the election by putting the votes in a carriage with the world's fucking strongest horses. That solid brick. What kind of steroid oats are you feeding these things? Ooh. Oh yeah, we did the 90s crotch reaction. And it's 2005! Oh, and get a load of this denial of reality. What do I... No! 
He lands on a cactus literally so we can just have this painfully awkward reaction shot. <sighs> Jesus, even Wiley e. Coyote who's had God knows how many reactions to cactus is like... Yeah, that was weird. Two men end up seeing Zoro without his mask, but right now that's not an issue, as Zoro has saved the boats. Yay, a dark masked man whose identity is unknown is handing us our ballads. Surely this is still legit, right? In three months, every boat of every pueblo around California will be counted. And it is my hope that we will finally call ourselves Americans. I don't know, this film seems way too Americanized already. This, of course, brings him back to his lovely wife, Elena, played by Catherine Zeta-Jones. Cowboy! Cowboy! Ow! By the way, get used to this tracking shot while the music swoons. They milk it more than the two fat ladies' butter factory. I don't care if you mug more than the LA crime circuit. One day you will be mine. Though it seems he's returned home to both her and his son, he suddenly realizes that Zoro's days may still not be over. No, here is me, here is Quirin. We're this far apart. Ah, uh, you know I'm Catherine Zeta Jones, right? Where's that proof? That you do not know your own son. But they summon Zoro by ringing the bell five times because. I'm sure it was cheaper than this. And he rides off to save the day again. The following morning, Joan starts to feel like she's being watched. Oh yeah, cause they look intimidating. Run, woman! They might start to sing the banker song from Mary Poppins! <laughs> yes, I probably should have opened with that. Can I interest you in a show about an island that was ruined by a writer's strike? We then see Banderas at, wait a minute, wasn't the last time we saw him he was being summoned as Zoro? Yeah, they ring the bells, he gets in the costume, he rides off. What the fuck happened in between here? Quickly, Zoro, three naked men in a bathtub are in need of a dealer. Where you go? To beg Elena's forgiveness. But just when he realizes he should spend more time with his family and is about to change his ways, his wife issues him a Z voice. Oh, really? In 1850, huh? Hell, you couldn't even get away with this in 1950. I think just thinking the word back then was probably illegal. So rather than, oh, I don't know, just talk to her or admit he was wrong, he does the more logical route by getting blind, stinking drunk and bad-talking her for about three months. What happened to my clothes? I removed them last night so you wouldn't catch pneumonia. After you came back from the cantina, you went for a spin. This hotel doesn't have a pool. We have a fountain. Zorro, Zorro, he sleeps by power past noon. Zorro, Zorro, we doubt he'll sober up soon. This doesn't set well with his son Joaquin, who is starting to get restless in his studies. And how exactly does a flaming poker fit into your little theory? It fits... in your butt. <laughs> Come here, demonio! No? Okay, but before we proceed any further, I just want to give you fair warning. This is the stupidest thing you'll see in an action film for a long time. It's actually kind of amazing. If you're wearing glasses or any kind of eyewear at all, be ready to drop them because this will result in an immediate face palm. Go ahead. What the hell am I watching right now? This can't be for real. This cannot be for fucking real. How can the prior film that brought us decapitation slicing up others, years of torture, bring us this second grader fan fiction bullshit? It is so mind-bogglingly stupid that I actually refuse to believe it really happened. In my opinion, this is all just a fantasy going on in the kid's head while in reality he's getting his ass thrashed and this is his only way coping with it. I'm jumping out of the classroom! <laughs> I just had a sword fight with the teacher! <laughs> all the kids are chanting my name! <laughs> 
But his father sees what he did, resulting in what else? Absolutely nothing! Yeah, no punishment, no talking, he doesn't even send him back to his fucking class! He simply asks, what's with him? What's with you, huh? Christ, no wonder your wife left you! Your parenting skills are on par with Octomom! But, big surprise, his dumb behavior doesn't stop there. He's invited to a party hosted by Rufus, I'll pretty much be the bad guy in everything I'm in so well, where he discovers, of course, that Jones is getting married to him after being separated for only three months. Alejandro. Elena. Armand. De La Vega. Count. Donkey! Thus, our brave and virtuous Zorro gets plastered and makes a complete dick of himself. Perhaps you should wear lipstick or you're gonna act like my mother. I can handle her! Yeah. Fall to your knees and beg me to take you back. Zorro, Zorro, so drunk he can't even walk. Zorro, Zorro, his ex-wife he likes to stalk. After getting thrown out of the party, he finds a corner to go get drunk in where, believe it or not, even his horse starts to drink with him. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 there you go! Zorro, 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 Zorro. My tequila warm, dangling in the wind. This is gone. Stop filming this piece of shit and start making a real movie. I mean a drunken horse? WTF. Now, of course, somehow nobody else heard or saw that giant explosion, which means Banderas is the only one who can figure out what's going on. An explosion? I simply wanted to make sure you were both safe. As much as you had to drink last night, I'm sure your vision was impaired. Yes, but my hearing isn't. What the hell kind of accent are you trying to do? You do play polo, I take it. Naturally. <sighs> Remember when this music used to go to cool stuff? In the first film, it was a horse chase, a sword fight. Now it's goddamn polo. Oh, they just keep upping the fucking ante, don't they? Polo! polo, polo. Victor, go the spoils. So, after that completely pointless exchange, Temporary Tattoos here goes to steal the deed to a person's house so he can own their land. Please, senora, this land is all we have. And the Lord shall expel them before you, and ye shall possess their land. You know, I don't think he knows what those words actually mean. I think he just memorized random passages, thinking they'll sound important. And Samson visited his wife with a young goat and said, I will go into my wife in her room. Wow, that sounded bad. Okay, just forget that last verse. That's, uh, th 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 that's not me. Drop your guns. All of you! Zoro has them where he wants them, tells the couple to go inside, and then just takes off like a pussy. Wait, he tells them to go inside the house and then doesn't even stay to protect them? That's like telling a mouse, go get the cheese from the mouse trap. I shall be with you in spirit from afar. This leads to the husband getting killed, but luckily Zoro's horse is inflammable and saves the wife and kid. Are horses just like super beings in this world? Eventually Zoro sneaks into the bad guy's house while Jones does pretty much the exact same thing. Where is the bathroom? I would like the powder in my cheeks. Yes, your tan does seem to be coming off. Police Navidad assholes, I am Zor. Ho ho ho! It'll take my boys two days to cover the quarter mile. Otherwise, you get nothing. Listen to me, you backwards ass frog. You hedge on my money. You won't ever see me. Christ, I am so bad at what I do. Do you have a Bible quote you're especially afraid of? Our two heroes bump into each other after snooping around, leading to Zoro having to hide. <laughs> Jesus, I think Mad About You had less bickering than this film! <laughs> We're hoping to get the horse's own Nickelodeon show. Check your local listing. <laughs> so, in the mother of all coincidences, Barbecue Sauce Tear happens to stop by a field trip that Zoro's son happens to be a part of and happens to sneak aboard without being seen. Quel coincidence! What are you doing here, kid? Looking at two of the ugliest guys I've ever seen. <gasps> no! Soap! All we can do is duck from its aroma pleasing destruction! <laughs> Zoro saves him and gets him to safety, only to be captured himself by the people who know his identity. 
were the Pinkertons, operatives of the United States government. Elena works for you. So, as you probably figured out, these are agents who blackmailed Jones to be a spy for them so they can stop whatever evil plans Zoell is up to. Okay, two major problems with this. One, why the fuck couldn't she tell him that? Even if they threaten to kill him or her, she can still tell him and he can just be on his guard. Second, and definitely the bigger problem here, you find out who Zoro is and you decide to use his wife. Why the fuck don't you use Zoro? I mean, he's Zoro! He's fucking Zoro! He's literally an action hero! What, you go for his wife? What the fuck's wrong with you? How would this make sense in any reality? I know who you are, Bruce. And if you don't want me to tell the cops out there, I think you know what I want you to give me. And what is that? I want... Alfred. My butler? Yeah. Why the hell do you want my butler? Oh, Commissioner Gordon! All right, all right, I'll give him a call. Alfred? Oi. Get down there. Oi. It's on his way. You do know I'm Batman, right? Yeah, I don't care. I can bug phones, sneak into places. I still want my Alfie. Okay, I don't follow this at all. Right, there I am. Sweet cakes! Darling! I can do gasoline drawings on a bridge! We, we don't, don't care. care! I am so done with this kick. So, as if this Zoro couldn't possibly be any more pathetic in this film, he ends up getting stuck in jail and has to rely on his son to break him out. That's right, an eight-year-old little boy is going to break out Zoro. His son, of course, has a foolproof way to break him out. He just bends over! Christ, even my dumb guard standards as borderline brain dead! What, he couldn't dress up like a woman and lure him with his feminine wiles? He then meets up with Jones at our villain's headquarters. <laughs> Survey says! Pretty lame! That, that, that was pretty lame. They then discover that Sewell is part of the Knights of Evil Smoky Rooms who want to stop California from becoming a state as well as destroy all of America. The power of the United States will be so great, it will overshadow us. But America has one weakness. Just one? It's people. Well, sure, and uh, all of this. Nitroglycerin. They are preparing to launch a preemptive strike against Washington. I've heard enough. Brothers, you know my spirit is with you. But we risk antagonizing a sleeping giant if we fail. I'll see myself out. As a member of an evil organization, I expect no retaliations resulting in the end of me whatsoever. Lord Dillingham? Oh, yes? Would a demonstration put your mind at ease? Actually, I think it would. Thank you very much. <laughs> My God, I could hear that cliché all the way over here. Unless you come to confess, you have no business here, McGivens. So interview with a redneck vampire hears that Zorro visited the priest and dropped off the boy there. And like most religious nuts, he shouts his damn Bible quotes everywhere except in the goddamn church. All right, I'll tell you. Wow, I really do think this is the most useless villain I have ever seen on film. I mean, he hasn't done one thing correctly. I think the killer from Scream had less Pratt Falls than this guy. I'm so sorry, Padre. If you had a hat, I would have shot that. They take the kid away as Zoro, the master of disguise, sneaks in to where they're making the nitro without ever being known. Did everybody just come down with a case of the stupids? Seriously, how many people are working in this damn place? Not one of them? Fucking one of them notices that one of them is wearing a black mask and is so obviously Zoro. All of him is exposed except for his hat! Haha, oh, <laughs> we got you now, Zoro. Santa Claus! Our apologies, we thought you were Zoro. Oh, it's no problem. 
But uh, for your disobedience, go cut your heads off. But only the Emperor can demand such... Your Majesty. Now get to the choppy choppy. <laughs> ha ha! They're all eventually caught and his son is shown who Zora was the whole time. Puppy. And as you can see, his amazement fades quite quickly. Eh, it would have been cooler if he was Spider-Man. Goodbye, De La Vega. <laughs> no! Let me find the walkie. No, please. This is the one time I can actually do something right. Elena, my family is my life. And seeing how my life is about to be dead, you can kind of see where you lie on the totem board. Okay, so this guy has Zoro. He's got a knife to his fucking neck. There's no way he can escape. What does he do? Pushes him away, giving him time to fight back. This guy, he's unbelievable. The only thing he got done in this movie was shoot the fucking priest. And even then, I think that was just a lucky shot. Oh my god! Are you fucking kidding me? He didn't even kill the goddamn priest. Claim your prize, man, claim your prize. You are the most worthless villain in film history. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. I know that sounds unbelievable, but he actually does manage to get stupider. This idiot is so goddamn dumb that Zoro doesn't have to end up killing him. He actually ends up killing himself. I'm not even kidding. He goes out like a whiny pussy bitch. Even his scream was embarrassing. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. We will never see a less intimidating antagonist. Well done, sir. Well done. Oh, and how did the priest survive that gunshot, you might ask? Guess. No, really guess, because there's only one thing to guess, and it's, of course, the right answer. You know you're thinking it. Go ahead. You can say it out loud. The cross stopped the bullet. God works in mysterious cliches. Fuck. Kirk Cameron is more subtle than you. So he goes after a train filled with nitro, which also holds his family, and coincidentally picks the exact right window to punch. To be fair though, I do love this line. So the devil will know who sent you. I can handle my own paperwork. Oh! They strap John Murdoch to the front of the train where he blows up with the nitro, and thank god somebody started to build a brick wall, but then stopped 1 80th of the way through. Welcome to the Union, Governor. Yay! We belong to a country that's still using slavery! Freedom! Wonderful freedom! Our heroes decide to get remarried only to find the Bells are summoning Zoro again. And... I guess everybody's okay with him abandoning his family now! Padre, Wait. can you hurry it up a little? The people are calling. Let's hear it for our hero who has gone through absolutely no change whatsoever! Debbie! 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 Jesus Christ, what the hell happened? The first film was so good, and it's so hard to believe that the same people were involved with it. The characters are idiots who don't learn anything, the fighting is way too silly to get invested in, the humor's not funny, the drama's not interesting. It just feels like it was written by a child. I still stand by the first Zora movie with Banderas and Zeta Jones is an action marvel. One of the most entertaining of the past few decades. But this? This is just a disaster. It killed the chance of there ever being a Zora movie in the near future. But hey, if it was with these people again, maybe that was a good thing. Because I don't think I could sit through a piece of crap like this ever again. Well, maybe they changed one thing. That could work. <laughs> nah, nah, it's still stupid. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to. Backwards ass frog.